Coffee on a Tuesday, and Blog 4. Today I want to talk about the peaceful protests currently happening in Lower Manhattan called Occupy Wall Street. It's starting to gather some buzz in the mainstream media, which I watch obsessively, and also the rosy eyes of Michael Moore. So you know it's legitimate. So Occupy Wall Street is a leaderless protest with a vague set of demands. It's started by a Canadian activist group called Adbusters, and it aims to model the protest from Tahrir Square in Egypt last March, which unseated their president, Hosni Mubarak. The Tahrir Square protest had a simple but intense demand. Mubarak must resign. The protest in Liberty Park is crowded with lots of littler, less forceful demands. Some have come to protest unemployment, some to protest the wealth inequality in this country, some the wars, some the corruption of campaign finance laws, some environmental issues, and some have come just to create a spectacle. Despite their demands, presumably everybody is angry at the same thing. The reckless abandon perpetrated on Wall Street, which caused the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008. Maybe we should take a minute to understand the financial crisis. One minute. So Wall Street started bundling home loans together and selling slices of those loans to investors. Investors were making big money, so they started pushing the lenders saying, we need more loans. The lenders were already giving people loans with good credit, so they started lowering their criteria. It used to be you needed a credit score of 620 and a down payment of 20%. Now they'll settle for a 500 credit score and no money down. Joe Schmo buyer assumes that if the bank's willing to lend him money, then he must be able to afford it. He buys his dream house. The bank's new securities based on bad mortgages were risky, so to control potential fallout, they started buying insurance. If mortgages default, the insurance company pays. Default, swap. So the banks have potential losses insured, the risk moves off their books, they invest more. One insurance company took on more swaps than any other. American International Group. Why did they do this? Fees, premiums, millions. AIG figured the housing market would keep going up, but then, all of a sudden, the housing prices go down. Joe Schmo buyer bought his dream house at a teaser rate mortgage, now that rate goes away. Payments go up, he defaults. Mortgage-backed securities tank, AIG has to pay off the swaps, all of them at the same time all over the world. They can't afford it, of course, so the government does this. The government under Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson passes the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act, through which they can purchase troubled assets and inject capital into the banks from a fund called the Troubled Asset Relief Program, which holds a cool 700 billion. Now the quick legislation did prevent a catastrophe, but it didn't stop people from losing confidence. It didn't stop people from holding onto their money. It didn't stop them from not consuming the goods and services of this economy. So demand goes down. The economy contracts, businesses stop hiring, and three years later, <laughs> Hank Paulson said this on Charlie Rose in 2008. Their constituents were angry, okay? And they had a right to be angry. They had no part in making this. The constituents, that's us. They had no part in making this. But did we? Are we guiltless? They had no part in making this. Or have we as consumers pushed and pushed for years every corporation to get us the best deals on our goods and the best returns on our investments. Are we complicit in a system which was driven to do anything to beef up its stock value and lower its prices on goods, even to the point of selling, bundling, and gambling on bad mortgages so that we could get t-shirts at $20 a dollar? Capitalism has strengthened the part of our brains that are consumers and investors. Super capitalism has made us terrifically adept at thinking of ourselves and practicing being very, very efficient and adept consumers and investors. Don't get me wrong, this is not to say that the Wall Street Titans are blameless, but each of us are made up of two parts, the part that is a consumer and the part that is a citizen. Yes, Washington is awash with corporate lobbyists, but what are those lobbyists actually doing? Most of those lobbyists are there in Washington to get a competitive advantage over their competitors who are also in Washington trying to use public policies to get a competitive advantage over their competitors. The noise level is so high that the public, you and I, cannot be heard. At least the citizen in us cannot be heard.
The consumer and investor in us is the only voice that is being heard. We are going to have to be willing to give up some of the benefits that the consumer side of ourselves has gotten in the last few decades. And certainly it's important as citizens that we exercise our rights like the people in Liberty Park are doing right now. But perhaps it's more important that as Americans we exercise our privileges. One of our privileges is to learn and study anything we want and do it systematically. It's important that we lead with reason and not emotion. If people are angry and frustrated and worried about their jobs, if they feel that they are not getting ahead, and if they feel that the dice are loaded against them, that somehow the economy is, is fixed, uh, that government and business are in cahoots, that's when you ignite the kind of social change that could be very progressive and very reform-minded, but also could be very reactionary. Check for some cool articles in the doobly-doo about this. Thanks for listening and